What do I practice when I've not been practicing? Let's talk about that. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. As you could possibly guess from the generous reverb in this empty room as well as my barren empty walls back here, I am in the process of moving, which sucks because that means I've been spending way more time packing boxes than playing guitar. Plus here lately I've had a bunch of bass gigs playing for Andy Timmons and Andy Wood, which means that any time that I have to devote to playing music has been spent keeping my chops up on the big guitar. I've got to tell you guys what, my guitar playing is starting to sound pretty rusty especially my alternate picking chops over here in my right hand. So on today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys a series of simple exercises that I like to do with a metronome during time periods like this whenever I don't really have enough time to play in order to help me regain my shred powers and get back to ripping in no time. You guys can find full tabs for this lesson over on my Instagram page at Ben Elder Guitars. Just search for hashtag WeekendWankShot251, find the tabs and start shredding. Downloadable tabs, bonus lessons, backing tracks, and more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Guitars. Scope it out. So tone-wise, whenever I'm doing this kind of maintenance practicing, I like to use just a nice, you know, crunchy Marshall kind of sound like what I'm using right now on the Axe FX. Don't go for a completely overboard line six insane with a metal zone in front of it kind of tone, you know? That much distortion really compresses the crap out of everything. And it'll let you get away with murder with your playing. Your hands can be really out of sync, you can have bad muting and all that kind of jazz. And you'll never know if you're playing on a tone that's so compressed that you can't tell. Also, don't like practicing on a completely pristine clean tone or an unplugged electric guitar because your muting can be bad and you don't know. You know, if I'm playing through this, unplugged, sounds fine. But if I was playing through an amp, you'd hear all that crap coming from having bad muting skills and stuff back here. So by playing with a little bit of distortion on your tone, it's gonna let you hear the mistakes that you're making without completely putting a blanket over everything like it does if you use a ton of gain. I also recommend practicing this stuff with a metronome. I've got just a little Korg metronome right here, but there's all kinds of great free ones you can find. Even if you just go on Google and type in, you know, 120 BPM or whatever, Google has a built-in metronome. So if you're watching this, you have a way to get a metronome. So don't worry about it if you don't have the cash for one. Now as for what speed you should set your metronome at, that is something that I cannot tell you. It's gonna be different from player to player, experience level to experience level, and even day to day, you know? Just because you were able to do 120 BPM today, it doesn't mean that tomorrow you're gonna to start at 130 or something like that. That's just not the way it works. How much we've been practicing, our mental state, our physical state, all of these things can affect our playing, so you've got to find the tempo that's right for today. Now, I'm pretty sure that all of us at some point have practiced our alternate picking skills or tried to regain lost speed by practicing the good old-fashioned four-note alternate picking 16th note exercise, like this. One, two, three, four. For the purpose of regaining speed and rebuilding technique, I don't really like jumping into stuff that is straight 16th notes like that. P.S. If you're unfamiliar with that term, 16th notes means that you're playing four notes per beat. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. See, the problem is whenever you're coming off of a period of inactivity with your playing and you jump right in with like, you know, fifth gear, nonstop 16th note stuff, you can be practicing this stuff with tension and little tweaks to your playing that you don't even know that you're making because you're just going fast all the time without having a basis of you know smooth slow relaxed playing to compare it to and then what happens is you start to regain speed but it's using this tension or these little changes to your playing that you didn't even know that you made and you end up building up some really bad habits really fast so what I like to do whenever I'm practicing to rebuild speed is to take that chromatic exercise, just one, two, three, four, across the frets like that, and instead of playing it all non-stop 16th notes, try practicing it as one string of eighth notes, in other words, two per beat, and then do the next string worth of 16th notes, like this. One and two and three and a 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 one and two and so one 
one string worth of eighth notes, the next string worth of sixteenth notes, constantly going back and forth between slow and relaxed speed to a little bit more high tempo stuff. Set a timer on your phone or whatever and do that for five minutes straight without taking any breaks, just five minutes. Again, find a tempo where you're comfortable and you're nailing it and start from there. The reason why I like to do it that way is because whenever I'm going back and forth between those slow eighth notes and the fast sixteenth notes is I'm giving myself a frame of reference for how I play when I'm completely relaxed and in control, you know? And then holding a mirror up to it whenever I do the sixteenth note stuff. Whenever you're constantly going back and forth, changing speeds like that, it's really easy to pinpoint if you're starting to change something or add tension or change the, your angle of the pick or whatever it is whenever you start playing fast. If you're just playing fast nonstop all the time, you might be doing all those things and never even notice it because you're not giving yourself a frame of reference of how you play when you're relaxed. <laughs> So that's pretty simple so far. It's just been one, two, three, four on every string. And I'll show you guys some variations and stuff on this later. Now you'll notice whenever I'm doing the eighth notes, one and two and, I'm doing those with just down strokes. So down, 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 down. Then when I get to the next string and it's time for sixteenths, I'll go down, up, down, up. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up, like that. One of the main reasons I practice it that way is to help me rebuild my sense of internal groove. You know, it helps me kind of reset my clock. Because what you'll notice is as I play through that, if you were to like put this on mute, it would look like my hand was going at the same pace all the time, like this. Like the speed of the downstrokes and the alternate picking doesn't look any different. My hand is constantly grooving at the exact same pace, you know? Instead of going from alternate picking to alternate picking twice as fast, which can be kind of unreliable, by practicing the eighth notes as downstrokes and then switching to the alternate picking when it's time for sixteens, it's one of those things that's definitely going to help you strengthen your groove and play tighter with the metronome. Now after I reach the top there and I play the one, two, three, four on the high E string, which will be the sixteenth notes at this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use that same finger that I ended on, my little finger here on the fourth fret high E, and I'm just gonna move up a fret. Okay, so now I'm on the five. And that's where I'm gonna start my descent. I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, and so on. And just carry it down that position. After I end there on the two with my first finger, I'm gonna come up a fret here to the three on the low E string. And then I'm gonna play three, four, five, six, up and down that position. Whenever I get to six, I move it to seven. Whenever I get down to four, I move it to five. Always just using whatever the last finger used was, just move up a fret. And that's how you're gonna advance through the whole neck here. Another thing I want you to really pay attention to is if you start to accelerate whenever you're doing those sixteens, you know? A lot of times I hear people play exercises like this and they sound like they're outrunning the metronome when it's fast time, like this. You know, where the sixteenths are really outrunning the metronome. Or alternately, sometimes people have a hard time, you know, going from fifth gear back to first gear and slowing down to the eights. They might really drag when they get there. It would sound like this. Which again is another reason why I like to practice this with the downstroke eighth notes going to alternate pick sixteenth notes. It's because your hand is always moving the same way, it's always moving at the same pace, you know? Uh, you'll really notice if you start to rush or drag, whereas if you're kind of alternating between slow alternate picking to fast alternate picking, it's kind of harder to keep a groove going between those two things. So by practicing this with the downstroke eights and alternate sixteenths, you're going to be strengthening your own internal metronome as you do this. So after I've gotten a toe into the waters of the sixteenth notes, I like to go ahead and get in, you know, ankle deep. Because the way that I see it is, if I can do a string worth of sixteens, maybe I can do two strings worth of sixteens, and then go back to that lazy eighth note string to kind of evaluate and see if I can feel tension, you know, evaporating from my muscles or anything like that after doing two strings worth of sixteens. Again, it's a longer reflection period to see if you're changing anything when you start playing fast. Sounds like this: one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four. In my 
my opinion, that's really how speed is built. It's not about going nonstop fast all the time. It's about kind of the mindset of if I can do a few, well, maybe I can do a few more and maybe that grows into a few more after that. And the great thing is, is by building up your speed slowly, string by string like this, again, you're gonna be able to monitor and see if you're building tension anywhere in your playing and eliminate it as you go, rather than going back and trying to fix the problems that you've already built into your fast playing. Now, you might have been able to tell on that last example there, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really accent with the downstroke all the notes that land on one of the beeps of the metronome, you know? Again, by adding in an accent, I'm gonna stay even more locked into the metronome and even groovier than I would be if I was making all the notes sound monotone. So now that you're ankle deep in the 16th note speed, how about we go on up to the knee by adding in another string worth of 16th notes. That way you got one slow string followed by three fast strings, like this. Slow, fast, fast. talking mainly about the picking hand and it gaining tension and stuff as we play fast through this video but I think for just as many of us the fretting hand is kind of the problem area you know I know a lot of players out there whose picking hand never fades but their fretting hand will get kind of dumb if they let it you know so as you're doing these exercises especially the ones that have like the three strings worth of 16th notes really monitor over here in your fretting hand and try to notice if you're adding tension anywhere in particular the base of the thumb seems to be a real issue for a lot of players out there. If you ever get done playing guitar for a while and like, you know, this big muscle down here at the bottom, the drumstick as I call it, really feels sore, it's probably because you're back here just over pressurizing the back of the neck, you know? It's one of those things that kind of happens to us a lot of times when we don't really realize it. Again, unless we're constantly comparing our relaxed playing to our fast playing, you know? It's another one of those areas that can creep up and become a really bad habit if you're not careful. So be sure that as you play through these like long, you know, three string bursts of 16th notes, whenever you return back to the slow eights, really monitor that muscle down here at the bottom of the thumb. And if you feel like tension draining out of it or you feel fatigue or anything like that, that means that you're over pressurizing whenever you're playing fast. So try to eliminate that as fast as possible. And you guys can probably guess where I'm going with the rest of this stuff here. If you can do three strings worth, try adding on four. If you can do four in a row, try five. And after you're done with five, try going for all six straight 16th notes. By adding on strings of 16th notes one by one, you're gonna find yourself building up speed and staying relaxed better than you ever did whenever you used to practice this stuff all fast, all the time. And of course, there's about a million different variations you can do on top of this too, you know? I recommend taking all of this stuff and rather than doing all downs to alternate, all downs to alternate, invert all of that picking. Try going all ups to up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, just like that. In fact, I recommend spending as much time doing it that way as you do the downstroke way. I think for a lot of us, we just kind of focus on the downstroke way because we usually start playing on downstrokes, you know? Uh, but that can really cripple your playing in a lot of ways. Whenever you do that, you know, you're going down, up, down, up, then you're changing strings. Down, up, down, up, changing strings. You'll notice all the string changes happen after upstrokes, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you just practice it that way, you'll get really good at changing strings after upstrokes. Meanwhile, your string changes after downs will still suffer. And I'm speaking from experience because that's one of those things that I did for years. I just practiced down, up, down, up. And again, I got really good at changing strings after upstrokes at high speeds, but I always sucked at changing strings after those downs. So be sure to practice this stuff just as much with all the picking inverted if you want to get the most out of it. And if you're looking for more of a dexterity and skill building workout here with the fretting hand, you could always change up those fingering combinations. So rather than just doing one, two, three, four on everything, try mixing it up so you have some ascending and descending stuff on every string, like one, three, two, four. 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 Or maybe try something really odd like one, four, three, two. It's also a great skill builder for your hammer-ons and pull-offs to practice this stuff all legato, only picking the first note on every string, like this.
it's a lot harder to stay on top of that metronome whenever you've got the left hand, you know, driving the groove car, so to speak. And you could also combine that with the different fingering combinations, like the one, three, two, four, to enter into a whole new world of masochistic guitar practice. <laughs> Be sure to let me know in the comments what other interesting combinations you guys come up with on your own quest to speed burst success. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new slices of fried gold coming at you every single week. You all can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you guys like what you see here on my channel and want to say thanks, be sure to show some support for my channel over on my Patreon page, Patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. All the cool kids are doing it. So should you. Well, it's been fun as always, but I've got to get right back to packing on some more boxes and working on recovering my lost shred abilities. That way I can keep up with you guys. Thanks again for watching. Get away from the computer. Go practice. Let's click it. More picking.